The magnificent messenger of Allah The magnificent messenger of Allah Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen Amma ba'd fa'a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Please repeat after me Assalatu wa salamu alayki ya Rasulullah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Habib Allah Assalatu wa salamu alayki ya Nabi Allah Wa ala alika wa ashabika ya Nur Allah Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Viewers of Madni Channel, welcome back to YOLO, the magnificent messengers and the perfect prophets. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we started our journey of season 2 YOLO in a beautiful way, talking about the greatest and best of the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal, the magnificent prophets. And we were getting to, we dealt with Hazrat Hud salam and Hazrat Sali salam's qawm, and what we were talking about was how when Allah Azza blessed these people with the luxuries of life, when they became affluent, when they came, became well off, what did they do? They started to worship other than Allah Azza They became ungrateful. They started to prostrate before idols and they ignored the messengers of Allah Azza And Allah Azza being the most merciful, the most compassionate, gave them chances by sending these magnificent messengers to guide them to bring them back from the path of destruction, to give them the keys to Jannah. Some were fortunate enough to accept, but the majority were lost in their ignorance. Now, before we give you a quick recap of what we discussed last week, and the Qomi Thamud, and how Hazrat Sali Ali Salam tried to convince them, let me introduce my two resident guests. I say resident because Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we've had the honor and the pleasure of their company throughout YOLO Series 1, and most of YOLO series too. First of all, our beloved Shiraz Bay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, fresh off your trip to the blessed lands of Turkey. MashaAllah. And you uh, managed to do lots of ziyarat there. There are many companions of Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, resting there as well. You got the opportunity to visit? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And no doubt you went to the great Darbari Mubarak of Hazrat Ayyub Ansari radiallahu ta'ala. And what a blessed place that is. One upon arrival, one upon... Subhanallah. Just before your departure, a very blessed place, Subhanallah. Sultan, they call him there. Sultan, Sultan. Sultan. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Beautiful journey, may Allah will take us all for the arads of those blessed places. Um, you know, when you go to the shrine of a wali of Allah, you can feel the mercy of Allah descending. You can feel that spirituality. Can you, you know, you, can you imagine the spirituality you feel at the Darbari Mubarak of a companion of Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's just an amazing feeling you get there. MashaAllah. And uh, with us also is our beloved Bishar Bay. Bishar Bay is, um, I like to call him a warrior because every day, he, every program, he travels from Preston, MashaAllah, and he gives us time. And as well as his other Madni duties and his full time job, MashaAllah, he just keeps going. So, MashaAllah, he's our warrior. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. everything okay? Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So, viewers of Madni channel, where we left it last time was that Shiraz Bhai was telling us that Qomi Thamud started to ignore the rights of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Hazrat Sali alayhi salam tried to guide them back to the right path. And they came out with a bizarre request, a very strange request for a very unique miracle. They said that if you are really the Prophet of Allah Azza wa Jal, take out a pregnant she-camel from this mountain. And it may sound bizarre, bizarre, why did they say that? They were just trying to mock Nauzubillah, the Prophet of Allah Azza And they came out with the most bizarre thing that they could think of. And yet, look at the power that Allah Azza wa has given to his beloved Prophets. Hazrat Sayyidina Sali alayhi salam raised his hands in the court of Allah Azza wa And the mountain tears open and out comes a she-camel. They were then put to a test. There was a reservoir and the she-camel would drink one day and give milk the next day. They could only drink one day. And those leaders who were corrupt decided to murder the she-camel. This was the she-camel of Allah, naqatullah. This was the she-camel of Allah Azza wa And yet, 
they murdered it, slaughtered it. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla's punishment was heading towards them. And I think, Shazmi, that's where we left it, that they had committed this heinous crime. Hazrat Sayyidina Sali alayhi salam kept saying to them, don't do this, this is bad. But there was some badbakh, there were some unfortunate people, who were despicable people who went ahead and did this. And the Prophet Sallallahu he was uh, with the companions once um, in the place called Hijr, where this Waqiyah took place. And he, he says that, he said to his companions, never ask a Prophet or Allah hence for a miracle. Mm. Uh, because you will not be able to upstand the trials that come to you. Allahu Akbar. Um, because you're demanding a proof of something that's already proved. established. Yeah. And so th these people, they asked for proof. A mu'jiza. And a nabi, uh, when you demand a mu'jiza, they always, you, they, there's conditions as well for that miracle. So prior to establishing this miracle, he said, you must respect this camel, and whatever comes with it, you must respect. And you have to keep, you know, upstand with the rights that this, this camel will bring, will have. So their main condition was that one day, your, or the tribe, or the people will utilize that water, um, and then one day this camel will utilize the water. And this is the trial that they could not you know, keep up to. They could not fulfill. And it was a big, it was a big camel. It wasn't a small you know, this camel. This camel will drink enough water that the entire city can drink. This oh, camel wow. will drink it in one day. So, and that again was a test from Allah. Big Zawajal. test because they depended upon this water, upon this reservoir. Um, so they, they depended on this, and when they realized that this this camel is utilizing our main resource, they could not you know keep they could not bear watching this. So they asked for something like you mentioned that was very unusual, a very unusual miracle. They asked for, you know, the plan went against them. So they asked for a crazy miracle. They were kind of mocking. Um, they mocked the prophet by asking the prophet salam, They can't perform miracles. This miracle happened, and now the trials and the tribulations that came with this. Oh, the conditions. The, you, know, the word, you know the word fitna? Right? Mm -hmm. this, this is something that you should understand. The word fitna, it actually means test. It is not a negative word. In mm -hmm. its real meaning, it actually means test. So the test, yeah, so when fitna comes, the, when you say fitna to the jal, when the word fitna is used, it actually means a test, a trial. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and then, then it's used in, you know, we commonly use it, you know, the fitnas of today, for example. Mm. It's, it means actually, it means test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever passes them, he reaches high, high levels and ranks. So this was a fitna for them, i.e. a test, which they could not live up to. When they seen that, okay, we tried to mock the Prophet, the Prophet fulfilled the miracle. Okay, and now the conditions that have come with this, is basically backfiring upon us because they had now that their main resource of water had to, now is shared. There is the shriek within that resource. They could not handle this because this. Well, this was just arrogance, though, wasn't it? Because the actual it wasn't as if they had to starve for one day. The she camel gave milk as well, so yeah, they, yeah, they, they had. Yeah, they used they utilized the milk. They, they utilized the milk, and so they could store water. They yeah. just couldn't drink. But it wasn't the fact that they didn't have the water. It was the arrogance of saying, "How can you stop us from drinking from this reservoir for one day, when the she camel is drinking? You know, we can't allow that." But it, it wasn't. You know, as I understand what Musi Saab was saying, was that it wasn't the the fact that they didn't have the resource. So it wasn't like one day they had to have, go thirsty. They didn't have to go thirsty. It was just the pure arrogance of how can we have this condition? And so gradually they were able to cope with it fine. It was just the, the, the pride mm. that was, was getting the better of them. No, but the depths of it is because they tried to mock the Prophet. You they see? tried to yeah. mock. They asked for such a miracle. And then it happened. And then the condition of that miracle was that 
You have to share the water. And mm. it wasn't just that as well, because they were stuck in their ways in idol worshiping. Yeah. So when you when you talk about arrogance, it was all the other things yes, that well, were yes, part yeah. and parcel of it as well. So they realized that it's not just this, that we have to change all the other things because Alhamdulillah, through this miracle of Allah Azza wa Jal, the, tr- the truth is now in front of us. In front of us. Mashallah is a and brilliant, brilliant on, point. On top of that, it stopped raining. Yeah. The, it stopped raining uh, at that period of time because they, you know, whenever someone performs shit, the children, m- mothers will not be able to bear a child. It will stop mm-hmm. raining. There'll be droughts. There'll be earthquakes. So then they were they were even in more stress. Um, this camel is and the amount of water this camel. Mm-hmm. But I think Shahzad's point is a very brilliant one because yeah. what what has happened is they'd asked for this miracle because they wanted to stick with their ways. Now that the miracle had come, in essence, what they said is, you do this and we will believe in Allah Azawajal. So now that this had happened and it was there in front of them. It was not about the water, it was about, well, now if we have to obey Allah, yeah. Allah we'll lose our way. So that's a, a very it's subtle but very it's good point yeah. in the, the mashallah. Uh, you know, it was, it was the fact that they didn't want to let go of their ways, they didn't want to let go of their the idols, they didn't want to let go of their, 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 their deceit, their, their frauds, well. their, their luxuries of life right. and their, their sins, basically. So they slaughtered the she camel mm. of Allah, not because of... Perhaps not, the water was just a reason, an excuse, but it was really behind it. It was, it was their inner desires which they thought we're going to have to fulfill. And this is why they say it's easy to prostrate to an idol because well, there's, no gonna, there's no rules. No the idol ain't going to tell you, you know, you've got to do this and do that. And this is where sometimes, you know, we say, we say that you, when you have a piro murshid, look for a kamil piro murshid. You know, you don't want one who says, put a tenner there and do what you want, I'll pray mm. for you. Do we janti, yeah, me janti. Yeah. Look for a proper Peter Murshid and you know, you get the, the real valise of Allah Azawajal who say, look, we don't want your money, you go donate it to your local masjid, but I want you to pray five times a day. I want you to read the Quran every day, I want you to adopt the Sunnah of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I want you to travel in the Madani Kafas, I want you to go to an Ijtama and do Zikr on Thursday nights. Mm-hmm. This is, and because it comes with conditions, We'd rather go go to a pizza, you know, give a nazrana, get the water, get a tawiz, put it around our neck, no namaz, nothing. It's easier. That's why people follow it. And even, you know, like Sayyid, like the Prophet, he didn't accept zakat. Uh, Like, you know, this Hmm? point that you've made, he didn't accept zakat. And anyone from his lineage is, they don't accept zakat, they're not allowed to, Hmm? because the Prophet, so this finance, this point of going to the messenger, giving him money and getting your sins, um, you know, removed. This concept doesn't exist. You have to perform toba. You have to perform. The ayat says that if any of them, you know, uh, performs zulm upon himself, and they come, to, they come to your court, yes, and then they do toba in your presence in the court of Allah. It, but whilst they're in front of you, first yeah. for Allah was for Allahumur Rasulu, and then the Rasul does toba for them as well. Ask for forgiveness. Far for them, they will indeed find uh, Allah Azawajal the most forgiving. Except to know because we came on to this, right? There was a waqia where this uh, Arabia villager he went to the shrine of the Prophet Sallallahu and this was way after the demise, and there was Grand Mufassir of the Quran who sat there outside the Golden Gates. And this Arabi came and he read this ayat. He says that I have heard Allah saying in the Quran that if I commit sin, I come to you, I do tawbah, and then you're going to do tawbah for me as well, and Allah is going to forgive me. So he read this ayat, and then this scholar was sat there just listening. And he, he read a shir. And these shirs is because you raise the point. You know, basically, he says that, oh, the best of those who ever has ever been buried, and because of your blessed body, the entire dust of Medina has become fragrant, uh, beautiful, and is um, a heal, a heal for everything. Nafsil fida'u li qabrin anta sakinuhu fihi al-ifafu wa fihi al-judu wal karam. My soul is sacrificed for the qabr that you are residing in. Fihi al-ifafu, in it is protection, and jud and karam. Jud is generosity, karam is basically generosity as well. I say, you know these shares, if you next time when you go, they're written on, besides the golden gates, there's two pillars. Mm-hmm. These ash'ar are actually written there. The, the, Allah. They, they're actually written there, because that same night, that scholar, the Prophet came into his dream and said to him that, go find that Arabi 
and tell him Allah has forgiven all his sins. Allah so then this, basically this scholar then mentioned it and he told every, it became famous. And now these, this, this shit that I've read is actually written on besides the golden gates of the Prophet and the two golden pillars. Yes. SubhanAllah, yeah. next time I go I'm going to look out for them, yeah. mashallah. But no, the, the point is that salvation is with the Prophet of Allah Azawajal. Qawm al-Thamud, they, they knew Hazrat Sayyidina Salih Islam was the Prophet of Allah Azawajal and he proved it with such a miracle. But it was more the desires of the world, wasn't it? So they were ignoring his rights. And today, aren't we doing the same thing? Don't we just, we know that what Allah and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us, what we need to do, what's right and what's wrong. And yet, it's our desires of the world, isn't it, that corrupts us? I mean, when you look at the punishment that they received, uh, Mufti Sahib, uh, you know, uh, writes in the, in the book that when Hazrat Salih alayhi salam and the companions, they went past there and they seen the state, the, the earthquake had destroyed everything, their bodies, were obviously destroyed to an extent like an animal or a horse or some sort of animal that has uh, stamped its hooves in that particular place Allah to Allah. such an extent that you know everything is completely destroyed the grass and everything that was in it so this lush green place that you know they were happily you know enjoying their lives in it was completely destroyed so it wasn't just that the nation was destroyed the whole area and what they uh, were uh, you know, living on and they were surviving on and they were thinking this is the luxury life that we're living everything was destroyed in that particular area so there was nothing left in that particular area So they kill the she-camel and they they slaughter it It was Qadar bin Salih what happened was he first with the, you could say the mashwara of random people the other eight leaders they Cut said, the hooves I think yeah. yeah, so first he actually struck the camel which knocked him onto the knees and then cut the hooves, well, the shanks, mm. cut the shanks off. And then, what they done after that, they completely slaughtered it, dissected it. And then, uh, so he, he took them, you know, the, the mashwara, the suggestion of them other individuals. But he performed the action, okay. They all agreed to it. And the qawm just stayed silent. But all of That's them, all of them became punished. That's an interesting point that this, the leaders were committing sin and one person took the lead yeah. and everybody was watching, enter, entertaining themselves. They weren't saying, well, this is the prophet of Allah and this is the sign of Allah and this is the miracle. They said, yeah, fine. And usually when the punishment comes, they say, well, we weren't involved, you know what I mean? It's like the aiding and abetting, you know, you're there, you're doing everything, but you, you haven't struck the blow, so you're trying to get away. So afterwards, they try to distance themselves from it? Yeah, so, no, so basically, you know the ayat says, فَأَقَرُ النَّاقَةَ That they all, aqaru is basically a plural form mm. in Arabic. They all cut the veins of the lower portion of the leg. They all did. Not just one person. Even though one person done it, Allah has included all of them in the Allah equation. Allah Akbar. Because whether you are they watching it, you are doing it, or you're just silently accepting it. That's silent approval. Mm. You know, even today, some person commits a sin. Yeah, that's him. Let him live his life. That's silent approval. In our heart, zalika ad aful iman. That in our heart, we should at least minimum believe that that is an evil act. Yeah. Whatever the sin is 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 um, taking place. So one person done the act, but all of them, all of them were included inside this equation. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala punished all of them because some stayed quiet, some accepted it, some gave the suggestion and one person performed it. Now, Hazrat Salih alayhi salam had warned them of the punishment of Allah and when they did this, what did he say? What was his reaction to this? So, he basically said that you got three days. Yes. You have three days. Allah. The first day your face will be called yellow, then red and then dark. Okay, so that you have three days and just prepare yourself. So on the first day their faces went yellow and the second day the faces went red. The third day their faces went dark. On the fourth day, well, on the third day they... Just stopping you there though, on the first day, they were, you know, they've asked for this miracle, the, the, the she camels come out, they've, they've been told not to touch it and they've murdered it. And then Hazrat Sayyidina Salih alayhi salam um, says, look, you know, the punishment of Allah will come and the signs are. 
But even at that stage, when their faces turned yellow and red, and they didn't repent though. They didn't. And they, they were still waiting. They were waiting. And they were they actually talking walked. amongst themselves. Yeah, yeah they, they the basically punishment. freshened up and they were sat waiting for the punishment. That's how arrogant they were. Well, this is what Mufti Sab writes, and that, that was the point I was trying to make. That, you know, even during the, the telltale signs that Hazrat Sayyidina Suali alayhi salam gave them, and this is sometimes what we do in our life, where, you know, uh, there are certain punishments that are dished out in this world. So, for example, for backbiting and everything else. And we tend to know that the Allah and Habib don't like this. We know that this is a grave sin. And yet we continue it thinking, well, will the punishment come? Will the punishment come? Will it happen to me? We defraud people thinking we'll get away with it. We harm people. We ignore their rights thinking we'll get away with it. I'm I mean, going to move slightly away and say that, you know, uh, one of the punishments is a person who's, uh, should we say, uh, unfair or, uh, you know, is uh, bad towards their parents that they'll be punished in this dunya. Hmm? And a lot of people that are in that state, that they're neglectful of their parents, they treat them horribly. And, you know, they see that, you know, the world is upside down. You know, they're seeing the, the punishment of Allah Ta'ala upon them, but they still don't change their ways. Hmm. And you, like you wow. mentioned, we, we see it in this time and in yeah. this age. So you're saying basically these people, that their faces turned yellow, then they turned red, then it, they turned black. And even when their faces turn dark and blank, they, I was surprised when I read this. Honestly, I had to read it again. I thought, is it all really say these, they yeah. would wear good clothes. They would put fragrance on and say, right, we're waiting for the punishment of Allah. So I said, I'm just stuck for Allah. How, how, how much deception? I mean, that, that is satanic deception. It is extreme, isn't mm -hmm. it? That, you know, they've, they've done this and they're still arrogant on it. So what happened? And there's, that when you're in that situation, there's no turning back, is there? You, yeah. you know, you've gone too far beyond the point. Hmm? You've gone beyond the threshold. That, you know, there's a limit to certain things. And hmm. when you've reached a point where you're arrogant, and it's not even you're justifying it, you're sat there, like, you know, Iblis, he tried to justify why he didn't do the sajda. These people were like, come on then, bring it on. They were sat there with the perfume and ready for it. That is like one level ahead. You know, Iblis that who caused all this shirk and whatnot, mm -hmm. he's put them into one step ahead where they're not even justifying what they've done wrong, <laughs> why they killed the, uh, the she-kamer. They are sat there saying, all right, bring it. I suppose I see, I see your point. That if, if, if I've done something wrong and you question me about it, and I say, um, you know, this is my explanation, and this is what I did, and this is why I did it, at least that's something. You know, Haruba, but if I stand there and say, well, I'm not Haruba, bothered. You're, 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 a, you're a barrister, right, in court. A person's murdered someone, he's murdered a person. In court, he has two options. Either he's there, he says sorry, he apologizes, he knows he's done wrong, he apologizes to parents, and he says to the judge, look, sentence me how much you want to sentence me. That's one. The other scenario is he walks into the court smiling, happy, he's got his arms out, he's smirking at everyone, doesn't pay attention to the, to the barrister, to the judge. Two different scenarios. Mm. One, he is careless. And one, he at least, you know, says, look, I was in the wrong. He feels sorrow. These people were beyond that. They were like, bring it on. We know we've done wrong and we're not justifying it. And I think there was, they were that blind though. In, a, in the court scenario that you mentioned, at least the defendant there knows. He's, he's thinking, I'm going there for life, right? Yeah. So I know. So in this scenario, even to that stage, I get the feeling that they were doubting that the punishment of Allah would will come. So on the third day, three different punishments at once happened. There was an earthquake, there was a loud scream. Okay, when the word Suaiha is mentioned in the Quran. When I was reading it, the, the words that came to my mind was a catastrophic sound blast. And, you know, the, it was just one of the, I, I wrote Would it be down. a sonic boom? Sonic boom, yeah. So that, something like, you know, um, a, a sound blast that completely wiped him out. And, you know, catastrophic seems to destroy everything in its path. Just before that, I just wanted to ponder upon one point, and you know, onto the views of Madhi Challenge to think about this as well, is that although the Qawm Samud knew they'd done wrong and they were doing wrong, they stuck to their ways. You know, a lot of the time, a lot of people out there, they don't pray their Salah, they don't do good, they're involved in evil and the wrong things. They know they're wrong, but they don't turn towards repentance. 
so how much similarity is that? I mean, you know, you know that sooner or later, the, the, the punishment of Allah, جل, the grift of Allah, جل, you know, inna bat sharabika la shadi, yes. you know, the, the pakr of Allah جل, is coming, and yet you ignore it. Aren't you like those people of Thamud who have, because it might be easy sitting there on uh, Madni Jan and thinking, well, these people are really bad. But are we any different in reality? But all those people who don't pray their salah on time, are they any different? They know the truth. All those people who cheat, defraud, backbite, lie, are we any different? We've seen everything. You know, we're, we're even more fortunate than the, the Qawm of Salih al Islam because we have the best of creation. We have the Prophet who everybody was talking about before and everybody will talk about until the Day of Judgment. And yet, being from that Habib Sallallahu Ummah, and yet still we, we carry on in our ways. I mean, if you look at it from the example of a person looking at it that I'm young, I've got, you know, all of my life, I'll, I'll do Hajj when I'm, you know, when I'm 60 and I'm mm. retired. Or, you know what, I'll stop paying my namaz when I'm a bit, I'm a bit older. I'm, I'm currently just at an age where I need to just chill out, relax, and do the things, you know. And in Madri Muzakira, Sheikh Tariqa Tamir Ali Sunnat was asked that question about a person uh, saying, you know, when they invited for namaz, saying, I don't want to pray my namaz. You know, going down that route of, uh, you know, what are they saying? Would be, you know, could constitute kufr. Hmm? And Amir al Sunnat, he says, well, his answer started off with that we pray the kalima, aren't we Muslims? You know, that this is the sort of things that you hear that because they pray the kalima, they were born, they pray, uh, born as Muslim, they pray the kalima, uh, automatically they think that after that, joke, whatever we say hmm. out of our mouths, they don't have the knowledge. To understand that that could take him out the full of um, Allah doesn't need our salah. Yeah. You know, if the entire creation of Allah, you're a learned scholar. There's 7.9 billion people on the surface of the earth. If all 7.9 billion right now fell down into prostration and said, Subhana Rabbi al ila all 7.9 billion, would it make one iota worth of difference to the kibriyai and the grandeur of Allah? It wouldn't. And if all 7.9 million refused, to believe in Allah Azawajal, it would make not one iota worth of difference to the magnificence of Allah Azawajal. So <laughs> anybody's worship is for themselves. For themselves. You know, there's a brother, and I was giving him the kiki doubt, and I said to him, when are you going to start praying? And he says that, look, I'm going to buy a house, start a business, and then, inshallah, I'm gonna, that's him free after that. And I said, okay, are you going to start praying in this month? He says, I don't think so. What about, you know, this year? I don't think so. So I basically, like this, I kept going. I'm going the next 10 years. I got to 10 years, right? And he said, inshallah, then, like, maybe within the next 10 years, I'll start praying. You know, that brother passed away a few weeks later. He was young. He was literally a few years or within the same age group as myself. He did not live. And, you know, I give him Neki Kita all the time. He was a very good person, mashallah. Um... But he passed away within two weeks' time or something. And that conversation, it just took in my head that, you know, he had high hopes, I'm going to do this, this, mm. this, this, and this. He didn't get to see another month. Arumba, how much ibrat is that? You know, there's a, uh, there's a narration here, in here as well, where the Prophet ﷺ and the companions, they're passing by the book. Mm. And the Prophet ﷺ, he says to his companions that, you know, when we're passing through this area, and in this area where... Uh, the Qomir, the, uh, the, the punishments of Allah, punishments of Allah came. He says to them, you know, go through it crying. You know, go through Allah it Allah. in a state, Allah. such a state that you're crying. Allah. And the Prophet wasallam, he then wraps his shawl around his blessed face and goes through that area. Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar. And, and he says that it was in, you know, the Khofi, Khuda situation where he says that, let it not be that the punishment that because of them ends up coming on us. The other thing was the Prophet ﷺ didn't allow the Sahaba Ikram to even allow, you know, their camels to drink from right, that particular from that place. Water. And they even made, you know, like the dough for the roti using the water. In one narration it says that the Prophet ﷺ said, throw it away. You know, don't, use, don't even use the water from that area. You know, from the Qomai Samud. I mean, this is, you know, that brings two things, right? Uh, Mulana Mustafa Azmi writes that, number one, those that didn't let Imam Hassan, the Lashkar of 72 of uh, Imam Hassan and Hussein Allah. drink from the river, yeah, what would be their punishment, number one? Allah. And those who give shahadat to Imam Hussein, 
you know, the same way this naqa was slaughtered, Allah wa ta'ala punished them completely such that none of their lineage continued. That what would be the state of those people who had, you know, even harmed the family of, uh, you know, the Prophet mm-hmm. Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain. Allah Hussain. Akbar. And it gives us this lesson from this. Well. It is. Once you're blind, you're blind, aren't you? And there's levels of darkness and blindness and the shaitan just takes you wherever he wants. Coming back to the punishments. We've only got about five minutes left on this now. But um, coming back to the punishments. There was an earthquake. There was this high sound. And... There was Zillat and Ruswai is what the Quran says. Musti Sahib calls the three Ayah Mubarakas. Uh, but what was that last one? Is there any kind of tafsir of that? They were, they were basically, it was a degrading punishment where they were on their knees, but it gives no further description. Um, so the earth shook, it turned it upside down, uh, you know, so they've lost, uh, everything's fallen. Then there's this, this loud sound blast. Um, that's completely destroyed the insides of them. And, it, you know, like you heard a loud sound and your heart just goes, it's completely killed them. And then as well as that, they had a degrading punishment on top of that. The, well, what what I know. remember is that their aftermath was that it's mentioned in the description that if there's a f- piece of land and there was grass on there and that grass basically died and then people have walked on that grass and you basically got dry hay, straw left mm. on that piece of land, their bodies disintegrated into this state that it was oh as if so their bones and the full flesh body, the meat, turned into such a state where it's like they are walking through uh, a place where animals used to live once upon a time. So their bodies completely disintegrated. And we've seen the exact same punishment for the uh, Ashab al uh, Ka'asfim Ma'kul, like Aten, Grass, hmm? the, like eight on straw, grass from Makul, sure, yeah. like it was eight on straw. Their, their bodies on the elephants, they, they were just disintegrated into the ground. So, is it right for us to know? Because we've been through different nations, and whenever the nations disobey Allah Azawajal, whenever they don't fulfill the commands so, of Allah Azawajal, there is punishment. Now, we know that from the Ayah Mubarakah, on this Ummah, there is not, is not going to be collective punishment like there was. And that's because of the blessings of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But individually, those who disobey, you know, those who miss their salah, so there what be, ibrat do they there get? There won't be asmani punishment. Ah, right, okay. So, so a zalzala, yeah, an earthquake or a tufan, a tsunami. So asmani punishment, punishment from the skies. From the sky. So there won't be punishment descending from the skies, but you will get punishments from the earth. Or oh, Allah Zawajallah will make a certain person uh, give him the ability to punish a wider community. Mm. Allah Azza and it's happened in the past as well. Well, you know, people like tyrants will come along yeah. and yeah. They, they will kill people. The, the other, the one concept I just want to deal with at the end here is this: whatever happened to Komi Samud? The viewers of Madin Channel will be watching this and say, "Well, they deserved it, didn't they?" Because the, the, Allah they were, the, they were the descendants of Hazrat Hud salam. They were a nation. They, Allah Ta'ala blessed them with a lot of things. And they then became so extravagant, so arrogant, so proud that they started to worship idols. They ignored the rights of Allah Azawajal. Allah Azawajal sent the beautiful Prophet Hazrat Salih alayhi salam to them. They ignored him. They, they called him a liar. They did everything else. Allah Azawajal then, they asked for a, a strange, unique miracle. Allah Azawajal gave them that. Even then they didn't. And the Prophet said, do not slaughter this animal. And they did that. And so, the views of Mandi Shana was sat there thinking, well, they deserve this punishment of Allah Azawajal because they disobeyed him. Well, the obvious thing is, yeah, if we say they deserve the punishment, and yet at the same time, we are missing our salah, we don't read the Qur'an, we lie and cheat and backbite, don't we deserve the, the, the difficulties we have? And are we going to get away with it in this world? If, if, I, if I lie, if I miss my salah, will I have a blissful life? If, if I defraud people, well, am I going to be financially stable? If I look, if I do, you know, teach other people's children bad things, are my children going to be on the right path? Doesn't it come back though? I mean, the the, the Quran mentions the Qawm Thamud time and time again. Mentions as the Salih Islam, and it mentions it for a reason, doesn't it? That they disobeyed, so they paid the ultimate price. Yeah. Isn't that the lesson we've got to take away from this? 
is basically in our time we see the same state where like exactly what you've mentioned is they did not listen to the prophet they got punished and how much is it that we listen to our prophet but the mercy rahmatullahi the mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. upon this ummah is allah is not punishing us directly allah is not giving us that same punishment that these people had we do see uh, earthquakes and then earthquakes, he's, yes. he's written In a book like, it's called earthquakes and their causes and it is a punishment and you know, Amir Ali Sunnah writes in that booklet and uh, it was at the time when there was an earthquake, earthquake in Pakistan, Kashmir mm. and uh, Amir Ali Sunnah, you know, writes that waqia regarding uh, a man who had uh, so many daughters and uh, his wife was expecting another child and uh, he says to his wife, if it's another girl then, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this so what happens is when the child is born, it's a baby girl rather than taking it as a blessing he takes that child, Nozubillah, puts it in a pressure cooker and the, the wife, this is her account, she says, I'm screaming, I'm saying to him and all of a sudden there's a large bang and the the, 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 the earth consumes Swallowed my uh, husband and uh, you know nobody sees him again after that. Allah He's swallowed Allah. up into the, into the earth. So these are true waqiyats that are happening. But we don't know. That, that was in 2005 that. Yeah. 2005. But let's look at the flip side of that coin. Because there's, a, there's another side to this story, isn't there? With Hazrat Sali alayhi salam, there was Qawmi Thamud, the thousands of people who disobeyed Allah But there were also the 4,000 who, who obeyed him, who obeyed Allah and his beloved messenger. What happened to them? They were in the same place. They were just told to go to the local jungle, weren't they? Yeah. And so the earthquake didn't affect them. The, sh- this, this shriek, this sound, this, this sound blast, catastrophic did not affect them they weren't disgraced in fact they were honored they were honored throughout their lives so obeying Allah's word, the story we the, the the moral of this story is that if you disobey Allah and his Habib and you are his prophet you are in you know despair you are punished you are tormented tortured and you will die a painful death but if you follow them, you could be in the same place. You could be in the same household as somebody who disobeys. And Allah will bless you, but punish them. It's a lesson about company as well. They had the sobat, the company of a prophet of Allah Almighty. And they were and trying to accept his company. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know, there's one other way to look at this. So you've got a wider population with nine leaders. So nine leaders who had all their uh, communities. So they were like the main leaders. Okay, and then now you have a Nabi who's saying, you know, don't worship the idols, you know. But basically, a Nabi he differentiates between halal and haram, mm. which will stop a lot of the things that they are doing being arrogant, so on and so forth. So now they are living this lavish lifestyle, and they have publicity, they have population, they have mind control, they have whatever. Basically, we see exactly the same structure today. And then you have a minority with Hazrat Saleh who was saying, look, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. And they are mocking hmm? the people who are right. Yeah? They are mocking the people who are right. But then, that the truth actually came and the batil, the wrongfulness that was removed. That was that basically... And you finished. get that today as well? Exactly today. So you have a small community that knows what's right and wrong and tells people to do right and stop doing wrong and then you have this wider population influenced by various different social media various today's today's way, yeah. and when this for example imam khatib a scholar a bubalik says okay don't do this do this do this do this he's like you know he mocks him he says who, who are you? Allah 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 Allah. our father's done this uh, I mean, and it's the same thing, exactly. our, our forefathers. I, I have, I just when we tell them, look, this, the way you're reading this is incorrect, you need to read it like this. Yo, my father done this, my mom do, you know, I, we've seen this for the past 10, 15 years, you've just come now, who are you? We see the exact same system now. I was going to mention that, look at the muazzin in the masjid, five times a day, he's saying, Hayya al salah, Hayya al falah, you know, mm-hmm. come to salah. Come to success, but you know when we go to the masajid and we look at the state today, unfortunately, you know look at our communities, uh, you know the shopping malls, 
the restaurants, all these places will be jam-packed. But it, it's the story with uh, everybody is crying. You know, that is a year on us, Sabir, or Enke. You know, within our mosque, we built our mosques in the center of our communities. There are 150 households directly around the mosque. I'm not talking, you know, quarter of a mile. I'm talking directly around the mosque. And in those 150 households, there might be a thousand people. And yet in Fajr, there's Imam Sab and two namazi. I mean, it, it just beggars belief. Um, I just wanted to kind of recap, though. Um, Shirazbe, we started off this journey from Hazrat Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. And we've got to Hazrat Salih alayhi salam. Now, after Hazrat Salih alayhi salam, this silsila of messengers, this this uh, Allah Taala's blessings of sending the magnificent messengers, takes a, a kind of a turn because we we kind of enter a, a new era, don't we? Uh, we enter a new era in the uh, universe where Allah Zawajal sends somebody truly special, truly amazing. And then all the mainstream religions that we have. So we've reached a kind of a, in the creation of the universe from Hazrat Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Islam, we've worked all the way through. And now we're getting to that center point, that pivot, where after this amazing and magnificent messenger blesses the earth, everything changes. So basically, Rumbay, up until Hazrat Hud Alayhi Islam, Salih Alayhi Islam, there is possible that there have been other Anbiya mm. and Muslims spread around the world okay, in different continents, different areas, giving uh, tabligh to different part, regions of the world. Um, so now, there is Allah has given us certain incidents that took place in the past that are relevant to us. Mm. Ones that were not re relevant to our society, Allah has not given us that directly. Mm. Some of them have been mentioned in the Hadith, etc. So, now, Time has been going on since Adam Islam, and the world has been developing in different ways. People's minds have been changed. You know how for the custom changes. Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, Traditions. Like 20 custom. years ago, you would wear a certain type of garment. 20 years later, wearing that same type of garment. We're talking about hundreds and thousands of is, years here. Yeah, this is many hundreds and thousands of years. So now, after Hazrat Salih Islam, after that, it is Hazrat Ibrahim Alayhi Islam. What it is, is an entire different era, a different custom, a different time frame, different types of people. The mindset is different. Now they are going beyond being just strong, beyond being resourceful. They are getting into magic. Next they are level. getting into sorcery. They are basically, they forget worshipping idols. They are saying, I am God. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. So shaitan has tricked them, tricked them to such an time, extent. Yeah, so whilst Hud Islam is dealing with this nation, shaitan's in the other side of the continent, dealing with another nation, making them do wrong. And this is all basically... That's a very fascinating point, because up until now, all the prophets we've studied, they were, the, the shaitan had introduced idols and everything else. Now from Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Islam, what, what I was going to say was you know, the mainstream religions all flow from them and they all believe in Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Islam. So we've got a focal point there, but you've made a, an amazing point there. That it's so true that now the world has changed actually. At the advent of Sayyidina Ibrahim Alayhi Islam, the thought processes have changed. They weren't worshipping idols now, individuals. So you've got Namrud, You've got Fir'aun, you know, all these people who are now claiming to be actually God themselves, Nauzubillah. And that's amazing. Um, we're going to have to leave it there, but we've got then this amazing silsila from Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and then the Bani Israel and everybody else that flows. And basically, from those ladies, then we've got the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa as well. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. So next week starts this amazing journey to look at the life of one of the most magnificent personalities and the most amazing messenger ever to bless this earth. I mean, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam so much and mentioned them so much. And all mainstream religions mention them as well. And I've had the honor uh, uh, and the privilege of going to their shrine Mubarak as well. And I was with our beloved Hafiz al Fakat who's also a presenter in Madhini Channel. And I'll tell you what, Alhamdulillah Rabbil by the blessings of the Nalani Pak and Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've had the honor and the privilege of visiting a lot of Mazari Parks, Walis of Allah Zawajal, Sahaba Ikram, everything else. The feeling, as soon as we walked in, 
the feeling we got was just amazing. Yeah. It was it was it was comparable to, and there's nothing in the world that can be compared to the, the feeling that you get in front of the Jaliyah Mubarak in Medina al Munawwara. Yeah, but it was comparable, yeah, to that sort of feeling. And you know, I looked at Hafsa, Hafsa looked at me, and there was other brothers as well. And we said, this is an amazing place. And that was the uh, beautiful, we were in the, uh, you know, at the feet of Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, what a magnificent messenger. I'm looking forward to the next few weeks. Viewers of Madni Channel, we've got to leave it there. But uh, keep watching um, YOLO and Madni Channel because we're going to talk about one of the most magnificent messengers of Allah Azza wa Jal, whose life is, was so amazing that a lot of the things we do are directly related back to him. I mean, Hajj is all evolves around Hazrat Sayyidina Ibrahim mm -hmm. salam. A lot of the sunnahs, a lot of the ways that Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zam -zam. Zam -zam water. There's so much yeah. that we are so indebted and there's so much to learn from the life of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Inshallah, we'll start that journey next week. Keep watching Madni channel and we're going to move on to our next segment, Real Talk. Salu al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the Magnificent Messenger of Allah I look at a person, don't like him. He's such and such, he's like this, she's like this, he's like this. Don't like him, don't like the way he walks, don't like the way he talks, don't like this. Hatred, it's all full of it. But then when I sit down and think, why don't I like him? Can't figure it out. What's going on, Shirazbi? Bisharadbi? Well, why is it that these days, you know, in the olden days, people used to like 99% of the world and the bad, the sinners, they used to hate. And even then the scholars said, don't hate the sinner, hate the sin. These days, we're so opinionated, we hate everybody. Well, what's going on? Where is this hatred coming from? What's happening? It's harum by straightforward. Um... Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, you know when Hazrat Adam alayhi salam, Allah commanded the angels to prostrate. Mm -hmm. Now he is Adam, right? He is the first, uh, he's a father of human, okay? And all the angels prostrate. Iblis said, no. He, <coughs> he refused. So then later on, different things happen. Shaitan, Iblis, he, you know, sent a waswasa. They ate from the tree, okay, and because of this, this became the suburb of Hazrat Adam Islam to descend into the earth and Bless bless the earth, basically. Allah says, descend, and some of you will remain enemies for some. Hmm. So this, this, this verse of the Quran, very significant, that there will always be a community that will always, and this, this, this incident occurred, or this, the, the reason, or the, the DNA of hatred is because Iblis did not uh, do sajda in front of Adam alayhi salam. And in the DNA of all hatred, mm. the DNA of all hatred is because of Iblis not performing that, uh, you know, fulfilling the, uh, the Amr, the command that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. Allah says that now up until the day of judgment, there will be communities that will always be against another community. That, and the DNA of all hatred is this, because Iblis didn't do that act. So now, in the dunya, there will be humans that do not like the next person, that are jealous, they're competing, they... You know, he might have said something. And now this stays in his head, in his heart, for a long period of time. This, this is the, I hope this is what you're trying to say. Yeah, well, the, you see, my problem is this. Before Akakrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blessed this world, there was hatred, enmity, everybody was greedy, everybody was jealous, everybody was envious, everybody wanted to belittle the other person. Then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blesses us, blesses the world, gives the world guidance. A lot of the stuff we see in Western society has been taken from the Quran and Hadith as well. Because the, these guys were in the doldrums and they, it took them hundreds of years to get rid of their bad habits. Only 100, 150 years ago, if you look at their history. Now, my question is this though. For 1400 years or 1420 you know, years, Islam has been shining its nur, its light 
and cleaning hearts and giving love and compassion. Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam changed the world by the love and compassion Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave. By the getting rid of jealousy and hatred and enmity and diseases of the heart. But now, 1460 years later, why is it that every individual is so opinionated? Why is it that every one of us has something to say about something else? I'm analyzing you, I'm analyzing Bishar al but I'm not analyzing my own hearts and my thoughts and processes. I've got opinions to say about you, I've got bad things to say about him, I've got, I've, and nobody in the world is right. Apart from me, you know, life, the world evolves around me, I'm the center of the universe. I mean, Harun Bay, if we look at it from a family structure, I've got something here where um, Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi Rahmatullah Ta'ala he talks about evil and he says things like evil assumptions, having hatred, etc. These are all acts which diminish love. So for example, in a household, uh, you're living in a household, there's two brothers. It requires love for them two brothers to be able to live together. SubhanAllah. If that love doesn't exist for whatever reason, and you know, a lot of the time it's things like jealousy. Why has he got more than me? Uh, you know, why has he got this and I haven't got this? Why is he living this sort of a life and I'm not living this sort of a life? And shaitan is, is picking away at that person. But the other person should think to themselves that this is the wisdom of Allah Almighty. You know, Allah Almighty has given him this and inshallah through patience and perseverance, there'll be something better waiting for me. But it's that patience and perseverance. We want everything which is quick. So, for example, social media is at the fingertips today. Um, you know, these so-called fake lives mm -hmm. that people portray on social media. Which cause jealousy. Which cause jealousy and they cause all sorts of issues within households, within families. And it's that uh, living that false life and then thinking that, wait a minute, you know, I should have this, I should be privileged to this. But at the end of the day, if somebody is working, working hard, food that is halal, has earned something and you're not privileged to it, then you, we should accept it and say, okay, but the jealousy concept comes in where I want to deprive that person from what they already have. Mm, because the definition that. that Amir al-Sunnah Dhamma Barakatum al writes, it's not, a, it's not a thing, it's not saying, well, Shiraz Bay has got something, I wish I had the same. It's about saying, why has Shiraz got it? I wish he didn't have it, and I want the same thing. That's the, that's the jealousy. The definition is meaning desiring the loss of the blessings of the person who uh, uh, you jealous against, and desiring the same blessings for yourself. Now, is this the one of the main root causes for en enmity? The desiring of someone losing destruction. Somebody losing it. Jealousy. Losing. Is jealousy one of the causes why I'm so opinionated? Why I, I you know, because it's does it. Am I conscious of the fact that I'm jealous of you? Whoever recognizes himself is recognized Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, this is the problem. We analyze everyone, we forget ourselves. But this is like a famous couple in a bullish shahs mani uddhya padaya jara kaar betha anu padaya ni. You know, we see yeah. Peel Sahib, we try to analyze Peel Sahib, yeah? And we try to analyze everybody who walks down the street. But we don't know what's in here and all the gandagi that's in here. So mm -hmm. I'll have hatred and enmity and jealousy. And what the scholars actually write is very interesting, a subtle point. What they say is that actually you might not even know you're jealous. Because mm -hmm. what the shaitan does is introduces it very subtly. So the shaitan will introduce it very subtly and you'll not like a person. And you might, so the next time, you know, it might be that there's something about Bashar al yeah? So I might not like it, yeah? Because he's, he's better than me, yeah? Which he is, uh, of course. Mashallah. And, you know, uh, and so next time you st say, mention his name, I'll, I'll start backbiting. I'll start, and I'll go to slandering, I'll make things up because how dare you like him? I don't like him, so you shouldn't like him. Why are you saying good things about him? So I'll, but you don't know, Yar. Mm. You don't know. I know what he's really like. And there you go. And if I'd analyzed my thoughts, I would have said to him, Yar, why am I, why am I hating him? Where's the enmity come from? But the problem is what you said, we don't look in ourselves. And so everybody around us, we've got to have an opinion on, mm. apart from ourselves. Well, we've got to label them. We've got to label them. Mm. And isn't that destroying our life? Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, jealousy consumes good deeds as fire consumes wood. Mm -hmm. Now, we're giving away our deeds. But I want to come back to the beautiful point that Bishar al-Bay made. Mm. Loving, you know, in Islamic community, we want, everybody wishes for this beautiful Islamic community, this brotherhood. And that comes from love. 
And the grassroots level is what you mentioned, our households. Now, in our households, we're not willing to look at other people's views. And we're, we're, we've got, we're so opinionated. I mean, what do we do? How do we, um, how do we get rid of this, this thought process, Shirazbi? And how do we bring love and caring back into us? I mean, we don't even smile at our brothers, yeah? You know, what is our life getting to where every time we see somebody, the only negative thoughts go into my mind? You might have a hundred and one good qualities, but why do I have to, every time I see you, think about the bad quality? It's, you know, I, I give this example a few episodes ago where there's an artist, he's made a picture, and the teacher said to him, okay, go put this in the market and put a sign next to it. Whoever finds a fault, please put a mark there, red mark. Hmm? And at the end of the day, the full picture was full of red marks. There was no place to see the picture. He's gone back to the teacher and said, look, this, this picture I put on, like you said, and, you know, the, uh, everyone's put a red mark everywhere. Okay, then the teacher said, okay, now go back and write, please correct them. Wherever, wherever there's a, a mistake, correct it. No one put a red mark. See, this is the problem. If we can pinpoint everyone's mistake, we cannot correct it. And the reason for that is because we have all them inconsistencies in ourselves as well. You know, we in our heart we have them diseases as well. We see them in someone else. You know, a Muslim is a reflection of a Muslim. Allah. Allah. The Muslim is the reflection of a Muslim. If our heart is clean, right? I'm a Muslim. My heart is clean. My reflection, who's another Muslim, he's clean as well. If my heart is dirty, automatically everything will look dirty. Everything will look unclean. Our heart needs to be clean. Thus, when the society around us, we will see the positives only, not the negatives. This is the thing, we only pick out negatives. You know, the Allah Hazrat, he says two things. Number one, he says that, Alhamdulillah, I've never felt jealousy. I've never felt jealousy. Mm -hmm. And he explains that whenever there's a scholar, I'll kiss his feet. Whenever there's a peace of, I'll kiss his feet. A student, he's my student, I should, you know, there's nothing to feel jealous about. Maldar, I don't want the dunya. I'm happy with the love of the Prophet. So you never felt jealous. No, you know, when uh, someone, you know, said bad things about Allah Hazrat, and his murid said, look, they're saying bad things. He said, okay, the guys that praised me, go and give them gifts first. <laughs> You know, he, he, this point that I said, that go on, you know, find people's perfections, Allah Hazrat alluded towards this. He said, don't look at negatives, look at positives. So, you know, when our mind flips and we only think of the good things in a human, this is what we don't do. When we say, okay, this brother, you know, he is very hardworking. This brother, I seen him, he helped a lady cross the road. This person, I seen him do X, Y, and Z. We only see the positives. That will that that's because the reflection from our heart is positive as well. I mean, I'm so currently traveling on a Madani Kafila and there's brothers there and they you know, they travel for the first time and they're asking these sort of questions that when we meet the brothers of Dawud Islami, they have these sort of characteristics. And how do they get that? And a simple answer is Nek Amal. You know, brother that Subhanallah. does the Fikri Medina, he fills out that Nek Amal card, he questions himself on a day to day basis, and Alhamdulillah Who's given us that? Shaykh Tariqat Amir Ali Sunnah has given us that tool to say, you know what, this is the Madani aim, this is your mission, which is I must strive to rectify yourself, myself and the people of the entire world. But how am I going to rectify myself? I'm going to do Fikri Madina, I'm going to fill out this Neka Mal card, I'm going to ask myself these questions. How am I going to, you know, I need to rectify myself. These are the points about myself. These are the negative actions about myself. But the, the difficulty with that, Sharad Bhai, is this. I live in a society where if I do something wrong, so what? Everybody's doing wrong. There's, there's no concept of self-accountability, is there? And, and is, that causes a problem. I mean, it's that love. Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bukhari Sharif. Do not be jealous of one another. Do not bear malice and hatred towards one another. Do not speak ill of one another behind each other's backs. Oh, slaves of Allah Azza wa live as brothers. Now, a lot of the anxieties, depression, the grief we have evolves, uh, is, is generated from the hatred and malice we have in our hearts. Yeah, we seem to hate everybody. You know, sometimes you sit there and you think, yeah, you know, this, this person, he doesn't like his family, he doesn't like his brother, he doesn't like his sister. He even talks bad about his parents, his teachers. I mean, yeah, either he's had a very miserable life where everybody in his life is wrong 
or there's something wrong with his mind. And usually 99.9% .9 of the time is the latter. His mind, the shaitan, has corrupted. I mean, it's like, you know, if I took you to a beautiful garden full of lots of flowers, yeah? And on one side, there was a burnt bush. And you sat down and started to cry about the burnt bush. This is what these people are doing, aren't they? They're ignoring the beautiful garden, the orchard. And they say, why is there a burnt bush there? And, you know, I mean, it's the same about life as well, isn't it? So, uh, the concept of, or, you know, I'm, I'm facing bad luck, I'm getting bad luck, you know, this isn't working out for me, this isn't working out for me. But not looking at the positives that, Alhamdulillah, I'm still living, I'm still breathing, Allah Ta'ala is still giving me risk, I'm still eating, I've, you know, I've still got enough sustenance to keep me going. But, uh, you know, why are we turning towards this concept of not having that trust? In Allah Almighty. But it's, it's interesting you say that because when it comes to the things I'm missing, I've got a list of them. When it comes to the faults of others, I've got a list of them. Mm -hmm. When it's the, when it comes to what I want from Allah, I've got a list of them. But I've never got a list of, firstly, all the blessings that Allah mm -hmm. has given me, and secondly, all the faults that I have. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things is, I mean, Mufti Ahmad Yarhan Ali Rahmatu Rahman says that one of the root causes of our difficulties in society is evil assumptions. Okay. Evil assumptions, envy, and malice. So, if, you know, Bashar al is doing something, I'll think, oh, well, he's, he's, doing, he's doing it because of this, this, is he's got evil intentions. If he's doing this, you know, some brothers do money work, and you've got other brothers saying, oh, he's he said, no, no, come on, hey, yeah? Or he's making a bit of money, or, and you think, why, yeah? Why couldn't you, why couldn't you do the opposite of that? Why can't you train your mind to say, Look at him, mashallah, I wish I could do that, yeah. You know, he spends day and night doing madni work. Yeah, I wish I could do that. He, you know, he's a scholar of the deen, yeah, my dream, yeah. Kash came, I could have done the jam, yeah, course. Oh, how lucky is he, yeah. And mashallah, he's now implementing it as well. I wish I could do the work of deen he's doing. No, but I turn it around. Uh, he went, he went to, he went to Bradford jam, yeah. What is he going to have learned? He probably learned nothing, yeah. And he's gone back to Rochdale, like, chase out the agar, the gap, you know. The reason we chose this topic, was that for the viewers of Madni Channel, what we wanted to say was we need to get out of this negativity. Our life evolves around evil, malice, bad, faults in others, yeah? Whereas the way of Islam, the way that Akka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa taught us was love, smile. I mean, Akka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa went so far as to say, smiling is sadqa, is giving charity, you know, smile. And if I smile, I, I mean, I was just, I was just noticing then, yeah. I, you know, in the, I was kind of in the initial phase. I was kind of kept a serious face. For the last five minutes, I've been smiling, and both of you got a smile on your faces. Yeah. And I, I, it was kind of a conscious thing. I thought, right, on, you know, I've done the hard bit. I'll, I'll smile. It's so contagious. It's contagious. And, you know, the viewers of Monday Channel, we think, are sat there and they'll be smiling as well now. Your home could develop into a garden of paradise yeah. by, you know, smiling, by being nice to others, by loving, by forgiving other people. Yeah, you know. People have done heinous crimes and people have forgiven them, and yet we're not prepared to give, forgive your own brother for just you know, missing out something. Right. You know, you, your brother forgot to give you a lift or something, or said, I haven't got time today. He was in a bad mood. He said something wrong. Well, yeah, can we not forgive him? Are we going to hold the grudge for the rest of our life? I mean, holding, you know, we mentioned a lot of things about materialistic things, but ultimately, all of these things can eventually start affecting your faith, your iman. Uh, you know, all these inner <coughs> diseases eventually will start impacting you where uh, you start turning away from your ibadats, from your worships, from your good actions, etc. Mm. And you start turning towards bad things, sins, committing sins, and then going down that slope where, you know, we've heard uh, through the previous nations, uh, you know, in, the, in our YOLO episodes that they started committing sins and shaitan got them trapped. This is the trap of the shaitan though, isn't it? Because once he's got you down this road of sin, if, look, if you are reading your five times namaz, you're being nice to everybody, your life is blissful, you will have passion for ibadat. But if you're thinking bad of everybody, you're doing ghibats and missing salah and doing everything else, shaitan's got you, he can make you do anything he wants. So he, he will take you away. So somebody capable as Bashar al yeah, mashallah, you know, does a lot of work, yeah? But say, for example, the shaitan takes him down this slippery slope. In six months' time, He's hating everybody, he's not doing any work, he thinks he's it, yeah, and suddenly everything goes downhill. Shaitan's winning. And we've got to wake up and kind of smell the coffee. Now, I want you to explain one thing, sorry, before you make That's the point you were going to say. What's the difference? If you're doing something, you've got a nice car, you've got a nice house, so you're a scholar, yeah? And I feel, yeah, Allah, you know, I wish I could do the same. I wish I had it, you know. Is there anything wrong with that? 
So having so basically jealousy, having jealousy over a good act, yani you desire that if this person reads five times a day salah, I wish I could do that. That's a very good point. Why do we get jealous about good stuff? Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a brilliant point though. Yeah. You know, why do we get jealous on that, you know? Yeah, it's always that person's got a beamer. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, if this person reads five times in the mazira, I wish I was like that. But no, what, you know, the point is, I'm going to come to this right at the end, is that we only take out the imperfections. Look at his perfections. The things he has perfected. Positive. The positives, yeah. So now he reads Salah, be jealous over that thing. No. You know? He fasts 30, 29 in Ramadan. You know? He reads all his Taraweeh, he reads Quran every, you know, he finishes one Quran a month. You know, be jealous about that. Don't be jealous about, you know, the car he's got, or the clothes he's wearing, or, you know, the house that he's living in. Be jealous of the good things he's hmm? got. And you focus on yourself. And you know, i uh, tell you something. I'm going to come to this idea later. You know, when you see someone, you know, a pr- person messaged me. He says, brother, I do not have anything, right? I'm stuck. I need some help. He was in another country, right? And I, I, was, I was actually shocked because he's got a phone to message me, right? And I'm like, do shukar for what you do have. If you, you know, uh, do shukar of what you do have, Allah will increase it. So now this person, he's 100% got some sort of phone device to message me. Oh, it's a common message I've received. Yeah. And, you know, so I said to him, you know, just do shukar, Allah will increase whatever you have. So look for perfections and do shukar of what you do have before mm-hmm. that is taken away from yourself. Mm-hmm. Do shukar of what you do have. If you are grateful, Allah will give increase you, it. Allah will give you more. Will give you more. Mm-hmm. So... Do shukar of what you do have and you know, focus on what's on in your plate. Don't look at the next person's plate. You focus on what's in front of you. What's in front. You were going to mention an ayat about is beautiful. Um, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So That's how the ayat starts. Allah, uh, sorry, Muhammad is the uh, the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This bay is the amazing bay. Uh, so the, uh, the Sahabi, animal. the companions, when it comes to the enemies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mm-hmm. They are very shadid, they are severe, they are very, you know, steadfast, steadfast and stern. Istiqama, yes, they're very stern, they're firm upon their belief. Ruhama ubaynahum. Allah, Allah, this Allah, is the beauty. They are so kind between and gentle themselves. amongst gentle. themselves. When what they're outside, they are lions, they are tigers. People, you know, the shaitan would run away from Hazrat Umar ibn al Khattab. There was an earthquake in Madinatul Munawwara. Hazrat Umar ibn al Khattab he hit the ground with his asa, with his stick. And he said, Uskut. That's what he said. Uskut biznillah. That stop yeah. by the will of Allah. That there's never been an earthquake in Medina since. Oh, Allah, Allah. You know, this is how severe, firm, and you know, their, 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 their way was, their mm-hmm. character was, when they were outside, between themselves, amongst themselves, they were humble. They were respectful. They would pray together. You would see Athar sujood You would see the effect of sajda upon them. They were very honorable. Yabtaguna fadlam min Allahi wa ridwana. They would seek fadl, not from him. They would seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm-hmm. If they did want something, they would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he gave it him as well. He would give it me. I have to ask. So Allah don't go Allah. looking in next month's plate. Look in your own plate. Focus on your own heart. Recognize yourself. Look for perfection, so look for imperfection. You know, in the olden days, what they used to do is, you know, the Bazuri, when you said to them, okay, uh, you know, how are you? And they used to, from the heart, they used to say, Allah na shukra. They had Allah nothing. Shukra, yeah. They said, Allah na shukra. Subhan we thank Allah. Allah, Allah, Allah. Yeah. Subhan and today, if you say something, okay, Allah, they give you a list of bimari. You, you know, the ayat, wala in shakartum la zidanakum. You know, my grandfather is about 106 years old. Right. He's still alive now, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, there was a certain point last year where we thought that say, he's going to expire. Like 106, 107 years old. And we actually thought, okay, so like my parents went to Pakistan. It was very, you know, a sad moment. Acha, when we, we FaceTime on the phone, right? And, I was, and he was like, Allah ka shukar. You know, whilst he was in mm-hmm. that, that severe moment, Allah ka shukar. Hai. Allah ka shukar. And you know what? If you are grateful, I shall increase you. He's still alive now. He still stands up and reads namaz. But his age is just amazing. Maybe 109 years old. 
Subhanallah. And yes, the ones who do shukar, you will see the person who does shukar, he does have more. The more you thank Allah, his I mean, heart this is, is a, content as well. This his is a is secret to this the is blessings of life. Because the more you thank Allah, look, it's a very simple logical theory. You know, as well. basically, we've gone through, you know, what you're saying is in Surah Kahf, okay, the heaven of Shaddad. Hmm. Uh, it starts off, Alhamdulillah, Hilladi Anzarala Abdi Hil Kitab. It starts off with Alhamd. Doing shukr. Okay? There's a few things. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, mashallah. Right? Mentioned in that surah. Shaddad was very arrogant. Mm -hmm. He made the. He made on the earth. The we went through it a few weeks ago. He didn't do shukr. He didn't. He wasn't grateful. He didn't say, mashallah, that is by the, Allah's will. Right? He just done it. Right? And Allah destroyed that before he even got there. Right? There's another story where. The individual didn't say inshallah, and mm. it didn't occur the way what he intended. It didn't occur. So these are secrets. You say inshallah. Secret code words. These are secrets, and Allah has given us these secrets. You say inshallah. That thing that you have said it over, Allah has. I, I shouldn't say the word. There's a spell over that now. It will happen if you say inshallah. Mm -hmm. You say mashallah. It will last. Mm -hmm. It will last because it's from the Allah. You have put it to Allah. The, the ayats of the Quran Kareem obviously are amazing and whatever they say is bila shak haq. Let's look at it logically. Logically, if you are not thanking Allah and Allah is still blessing you, then if you thank Allah, He's bound to give you more, isn't He? It's just simple logic, isn't it? So if you're blessed with the Ni'mat and you, you sit down, and, and the way to thank Allah, a lot of people say, Ya Allah, Tera Shukra, but Namaz Miskaro TV Taku, yeah? But a lot of people say, Ya Allah, Tera Shukra, go and do Guzu and read Namaz. If you thank Allah the proper way, Allah is only going to increase your blessings, isn't it? Viewers of Madni Channel, you know, in the olden days, when our Bazurg, our pious predecessors, and our elders, when they saw somebody who had lots of bad qualities, they used to see through it all and say, Banda changa hai. Galti yogi hai. Galti hai karda hai. Banda changa He's a good person, you know. He's done this and he's done that. I've seen him at the masjid. I've seen him here. So he's okay. He's a good person. And they used to ignore used to all know. his bad qualities. They'd look for perfection. And they'd look for the good qualities. And so they lived a very peaceful and blessful life because they had good views of everybody around them, from children to family to friends. Today, somebody's got 99 good qualities. They've got the one bad. And for the last six years, we've, we've, we've made that tree grow in our heart that six years ago, I saw somebody, you know, Shiraz Bhai or Basharat Bhai or somebody else being rude to somebody or fighting with somebody. He's a bad person. I've not looked at the fact that what the situation, I don't even know the situation, I don't mm. even know. Maybe if I've made a mistake, I've repented a thousand times, mm. I've read a thousand nafil, I don't know that. But I'm still going to hold the others in bad esteem. We need to get beyond that. Unless we let go and we start to love those around us and we start to form good views of people, you will not be able to fulfill your potential in your life. Mm. Get rid of hatred, get rid of enmity, get rid of this malice, get rid of everything. Just love and mercy. That was the mission of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the world how to forgive, taught the world how to be merciful, and taught the world how to love those around us. Let's do that and we will truly enjoy life. Salu alil Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the Magnificent Messenger of Allah Now what the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam likes, what Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam dislikes, what pleases the best of creation, what, what Allah azza wa and his Habib recommend for us, all of these things, some of us don't really care about that much. We care about our desires. But let me take you to some magnificent people who, my Piro Murshid says, Har Sahabi Ye Nabi, Jannati Jannati. There's no doubt about it. Every one of them is a shining star. And every one of them would sacrifice everything they had at the feet of Nabi Akareem. 
Hazrat Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala narrates that was sat in the beautiful court of the beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a person comes in and he's wearing a gold ring. The gold wasn't permissible for men. Akha Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam removed the ring and threw it away. And then said, does anybody amongst you want to keep a red hot coal of fire in his hand? Mm -hmm. After this, Akha Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says this and leaves. Very, very simple. You know, gold wasn't allowed for men. It was a gold ring. Akha Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa takes it off, throws it away. When Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had left, the people around, the companions, they said to the person, pick up the ring, take it, go and, you know, get it melted, make something for your wife, do something, sell it. And you know what the companion said? He said, by Allah, no. My beloved Habib has thrown that ring away. I'm never going to ever touch it again. How can I touch something that my beloved has thrown away? I will never pick that up. Look at the love that the companions had for Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was no harm in that. You know, he could have picked the ring up and gone and sold it. He could have given it to his wife. He could have done other things. But he said, no, I can't bring myself to pick up something that my Habib has thrown away. Because, you know, it, it's just that amazing level of love. What is our level of love though? That is the question. When it comes to Salah time, we can't get out of bed. Is that our love? When it comes to Zohar time, we're too busy at work earning money. Is that our love? Asr with the family, Maghrib with the boys, Isha too tired. Is that our love? These were amazing people. But the, all these Hadith and Mubarak were narrated and passed to us. So that we could learn from them. What lesson are we learning? What are we doing in the love of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's easy to say, Ghulami ya Rasul mein maut bhi kabool hai. Ki I'll give my life for you, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then with the same breath we ignore namaz. We haven't got time for the Quran. We haven't got time for the sunnahs of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't do that. If you truly love Allah and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then work hard, protect your salah, read the Quran every day. Alhamdulillah, you can download it for free. Go to dawatislami.net. Download Kanzul Iman. You've got the English version. You've got Siratul Jidan fi Tafsir al Quran, a beautiful commentary of the Quran. You've got hundreds of books, absolutely free. You can go on down, download them onto your phone, onto your tablet, onto your computer. Then attend the Thursday's Tamaz, watch the Madni Muzakras, and travel in the Madni Kafras of Dawat Islami. All these, what they'll give you. You know, it's not like Dawat Islami earns money from this. You know, what it will instill in your heart is the love of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But with that love, the passion to please Allah and his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah azza wa jalla give us one iota of the love of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the blessed companions had. Ameen. Bijahin Nabi Lameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Magnificent Messenger of Allah The Magnificent Messenger of Allah